English Planet Appunti di inglese A cura di Nicholas Yuldon Good evening and welcome back to another lesson in the series of English Planet. Yes, you're listening to Radio Dreamland webcasting and, and this is your English teacher Nick Yulden speaking. Okay, uh, this evening I have to tell you about the verb must. Uh, the verb must is, uh, is one of those verbs in English uh, which are auxiliary verbs. Uh, in English they're also known as uh, modal verbs. There are several of them, uh, such as can and will, and as we say here, must and may and could and would. They are very frequently used in English and, and very important uh, because they help us to say uh, all those uh, variable variations of, of life and language. Uh, in point of fact, if you think Uh, very infrequently we, we speak uh, about certainties in life. We more often speak about uncertainties, about possibilities and probabilities of life. Obviously we want to express our actions, uh, but we want to express them not in, in a direct certain way, but uh, in a variable way, uh, according to the possibility uh, that we can do them, that we will do them. As an example, listen to this. I don't know if the sun will come up tomorrow. It probably will, but it, it may not. Brevemente in italiano, eh, questo rappresenta che io non, eh, non sono io a comandare il sole. Eh, io non lo so se si alzerà domani mattina. Probabilmente lo farà, ma forse non lo farà. Repeat. I don't know if the sun will come up tomorrow. It probably will, but it may not. Right, uh, this is a general example of modal or auxiliary verbs using two different ones. Uh, but uh, this evening I'm particularly interested in one uh, which you recognize as the verb must. This is an auxiliary verb uh, which in many old grammar books is considered to be a, an auxiliary verb for obligation in English. Uh, this is one of the uh, usual myths which uh, I would like to explode. Uh, the problem is that for, for decades of uh, English teaching books and translation books from Italian to English, Uh, the, the verb in Italian, uh, dovere, il devo, etc., has always been translated uh, as must. Consequently, all Italians uh, think that uh, when you say io devo andare a Londra domani, uh, you translate that into I must go to London tomorrow. Uh, the only problem is that uh, about 99% of English people will not say that. So what do those crazy Brits actually say? Uh, well, uh, what they actually say is, I have to go to London tomorrow. Repeat, I have to go to London tomorrow. Strange to say, this translates into Italian as, Io devo andare a London domani. So what's this uh, new modern obligation verb, uh, have to? Uh, well, it is nothing more than the verb avere, have, together with to, T-O. Detto, pronounced as have to. Have to. I have to do this. You have to do that. They have to do the other. We have to do nothing. If you want to make uh, rather nonsensical translations into Italian, Uh, what you're saying in Italian, more or less, is quello che stiamo dicendo più o meno in Italian corrisponde ad io ho ad andare a Londra domani. 
Now, I'm a realistic uh, English person. <laughs> I have no great dreams or fantasies about uh, human freedom. So I understand uh, that, that we in our lives are obliged uh, to do a large number of things from, uh, from the morning to night. So we, we spend all of our lives uh, thinking and expressing uh, what we have to do. Uh, when you're five years old, you have to go to school. When you're 11 years old, you have to go to high school. When you're 18 years old, you have to take an exam. When you finish school and university, you have to look for a job. When you find a job, you have to work hard every day and make a lot of money for your company. Then when you get sick, you have to go very quickly to the hospital and get better. And then you have to go back to work as soon as possible to make more money. If you want to go from Turin to Rome quickly, you have to take the plane. There's another one, have to, have to. All of our lives uh, we're, we're saying have to. But uh, unfortunately uh, for, for the Italian world, English people, uh, the Brits, uh, don't use the verb must for this. They say have to, have to, have to. In the unusual event uh, that there is at some point uh, no, no obligation, uh, then you're, you're happy because uh, today you don't have to go to work. Uh, today you don't have to work hard. And when you're an innocent uh, young human and you don't know what your obligations are, you can also make questions. Uh, will I have to go to university when I finish school? Uh, will I have to go to university to get a good job? Will I have to work for 40 years before I can have a pension? In the words of Louis Armstrong, uh, what a wonderful world. Uh, this is uh, the world of have to, which is the normal human world of obligation. Uh, you're right, I, I am exaggerating a little uh, because I, I want to, I don't want to be boring uh, with, with uh, English grammar lessons. Uh, but uh, all, all of this uh, just to say that it is uh, not so simple just to translate uh, dovere into must uh, as the books may tell you. Uh, so uh, Italians need to understand that uh, the majority of English people are, are not saying must uh, to each other. Uh, which is a very, very frequently used uh, concept, as I say, uh, obligation in life. And so you, you may uh, protest and say, well, what can I do uh, with this word must, uh, which is in my dictionary? Uh, well, in point of fact, uh, it also has a use. Uh, but uh, now in, in modern English, uh, we, we generally use must uh, as a sort of a, a personal uh, exhortation, uh, a personal encouragement, you know. Uh, we say things like, I really must clean the car because it's so dirty. I really must uh, study that English lesson because uh, I don't understand the English people. Or I really must get some food uh, because I haven't eaten anything today. So you can see that uh, must is really used as a kind of a desperation obligation. Uh, parents can use it with their children. You really must do your homework uh, before you go out to play or before you watch television. You really must stop playing with your PlayStation and, and get your schoolwork done. Uh, at work, uh, your boss uh, may say, uh, may make the announcement, uh, you must all work extra hours this week uh, because we are not making enough money. Now, uh, just as uh, consolation and an act of encouragement, uh, please don't worry uh, if you go to England or you speak to an English person uh, and you say must. 
uh, it is not a crime. Uh, <laughs> they will they will understand you. They they, they won't uh, lock you up in prison because they because you use the wrong word. Uh, but uh, what you have to do is you you have to be prepared uh, to understand uh, what the English people are, are saying to you uh, when they are trying to oblige you to do something. So if they say, uh, look, uh, if you want to find uh, the pub, uh, you have to get off the bus uh, at the next stop. Or uh, if you want to go to the cinema, you have to park your car in the car park. You can't leave your car outside the cinema in England. Remember, by the way, that uh, parking in English, the word parking is an activity, it's not a place. Uh, so the place where you park your car is the car park, not the parking. And by the way, English people don't park their cars in boxes. Uh, they put their cars in garages. Uh, boxes are things uh, to put small objects into to transport them or store them. Now to go back to our subject uh, previously of must and have to, uh, the wonderful world of have to, uh, the, the risk, as I say, is not prison, uh, the, the risk is that you could get seriously lost. Uh, if, for example, you don't understand uh, the instruction, if you want to go to Manchester, you have to change trains at Birmingham. If you don't understand that instruction, uh, then you may very well find yourself in Edinburgh or Inverness uh, when you want to be in Manchester. Now, it may actually be very beautiful to visit Edinburgh or Inverness, uh, but if you have an appointment in Manchester, it's uh, not really appropriate. So, pay attention to the instruction. If you want to go to Manchester, you have to change trains at Birmingham. Okay, uh, I don't want to make life difficult for anybody. I want to help people to speak uh, good English. Uh, so I'll stay with my uh, statement uh, that obligation in English is have to. I have to do this, you have to do that. But uh, for advanced students who uh, are possibly better informed and have more experience, uh, there is an alternative uh, which is also used by Americans. Uh, some people don't say I have to do this, but they say I have got to do this, I've got to do that, you've got to go there, you've got to go here. For many English people and, and for the majority of Americans, uh, this is easier, an easier way of saying uh, what they want to say. Uh, this is, is formed uh, of uh, the verb have, then uh, a participle got, and then again our little preposition to. I have got to, you have got to, he has got to, we have got to, you have got to, they have got to. I have uh, omitted uh, by accident, uh, she has got to. Uh, to be politically correct, I, I must include this. Together with it has got to, uh, for robots, uh, aliens, etc, etc, etc. So when you uh, find yourself in London, you may hear people saying, I've got to go to Exeter tomorrow. I've got to visit uh, the museum on Monday. I've got to finish my work before I, I go to the cinema. And in more mystical, arcane uh, versions, uh, you may hear the Americans with uh, gotta. I gotta do that. You gotta do that. We gotta do this which is uh, none other than the English version have got to, uh, very much abbreviated and cannibalized, let's say. I gotta go now, I'm sorry, I really gotta do this before it's too late. What you gotta do, you gotta do. And when you gotta do, you gotta do it. When you gotta go, you gotta go. That uh, from American translated into Italian uh, means 
quando devi andare, devi andare. Our American cousins abbreviate everything and possibly make things more difficult. What a wonderful world. Louis Armstrong was American. Well, now I gotta stop for a few moments. Uh, we have some advertising and some important announcements. Uh, stay tuned, I'll be right back. Radio Dreamland Share the vision. Radio Dreamland, la voce dell'eco spiritualità. Seguitici su Facebook, Instagram, Twitter e YouTube per essere aggiornati su tutte le nostre novità. www.radiodreamland.it Meditazione planetaria del martedì. Radio Dreamland si unisce all'iniziativa della meditazione planetaria del martedì sera organizzata dal New Earth Circle. Ogni martedì sera alle 21 vi invitiamo a partecipare alla meditazione planetaria dedicata a Madre Terra e a tutti i suoi figli di qualsiasi specie. Ognuno può unirsi al cerchio planetario dei meditanti partecipando da soli o con i propri cari per una testimonianza di pace e di spiritualità che abbracci tutto il pianeta, per un atto d'amore verso Madre Terra, per un mondo antispecista. Unitevi con noi in meditazione, seguendo la Nassinar, la musica del vuoto eseguita al flauto da Giancarlo Barbadoro. Ogni martedì alle 21, per informazioni www.newercircle.org Radio Dreamland Share the vision Right, uh, tea break finished uh, Time to return to our webcast uh, English Planet here on Radio Dreamland uh, Now it's time for a little chat uh, As we say in English Uh, by the way, uh, the word chat uh, has entered the Italian language uh, by means of uh, computer informatics and social networks. Uh, now uh, the word, I believe, is officially Italian, chattare. Uh, but uh, where does the word chat come from? Uh, well, you'll be happy to know that uh, chat and chatter, uh, which is the longer version, uh, have been in use in the English language for almost uh, 1,000 years. And uh, they come basically from, uh, from the noise uh, made by small animals and in particular birds. Uh, so uh, when we are chatting to each other, we are simply being animals. What are we going to chat about this evening? Uh, well, uh, I'd just like to talk a, a little about, uh, about being happy and about one of my favorite topics, uh, Cornwall, the county of Cornwall, the ancient kingdom of Cornwall, United Kingdom. Frequent listeners may remember that uh, Cornwall is where I come from, uh, but the reason uh, I want to speak about it this week is that it is actually currently in, in the news for, for one uh, very important reason. Uh, G7, uh, the, uh, the, the meeting of all the most important world leaders is taking place in Cornwall. Uh, Cornwall has been invaded by security forces and, and uh, world leaders and policemen and military etc etc etc. Uh, for this great occasion where uh, the world leaders are uh, discussing uh, and trying to resolve Uh, problems with our climate, uh, problems with our planet. I hope uh, they have successful talks. I've seen images of Boris Johnson swimming in the sea early morning and uh, films, videos of a 17-car, 17-vehicle parade of uh, military and security vehicles uh, following President Joe Biden around uh, what is essentially a small seaside village, uh, something similar to Portofino or Rapallo. 
It may well not be a coincidence, uh, and it may in fact be symbolic that they have chosen Cornwall as a location for their important talks. Uh, since Cornwall is effectively uh, an area of outstanding natural beauty and uh, culturally, historically, uh, a land of uh, legend and, and uh, great uh, Celtic tradition uh, being uh, part of the, the basic of, of uh, European civilization uh, from over 2000 years ago. So I just hope that our world leaders will be able to uh, appreciate and understand uh, the, the, the meaning, the sense of nature which exists everywhere in Cornwall. Uh, and uh, it will, will convince them <laughs> to take some positive actions uh, towards uh, changing uh, the fate, the destiny uh, of our planet and uh, humanity and uh, the, the flora and fauna which uh, exist on this planet. Uh, one of uh, the great uh, modern attractions in Cornwall uh, was uh, a place which was effectively a recreated uh, biosphere, uh, a large uh, space station type structure uh, which included uh, various uh, aspects of uh, the biosphere of, of the planet, uh, desert-like conditions, uh, tropical conditions for example, uh, which, which was used uh, for, for educational purposes to, to educate the public uh, about uh, the planet, about the climate, uh, how to protect it and uh, how to safeguard it. Cornwall is also in the news, uh, in the national news uh, at the moment in, in Britain uh, for, for another uh, associated reason uh, with rather a dark history. Uh, there were proposals for two different uh, sites in Britain, uh, one of them in Cornwall uh, and one in the north of England, uh, where it was proposed uh, to construct uh, large uh, um, farms, basically farm structures, uh, for, for breeding rabbits. Uh, breeding rabbits for, for food and for, for fur and for various other uh, economic reasons. By coincidence, we, uh, we heard a similar story here on Radio Dreamland uh, the other evening, uh, where, where the situation for rabbits in Italy is also somewhat desperate uh, because of large uh, commercial interests uh, using rabbits uh, as, uh, as objects uh, to, to create uh, money and uh, to, to basically to satisfy apparent markets let's say uh, markets which in our modern globalized society means uh, markets which are basically created by the commercial interests uh, trying uh, to to sell something and the good news uh, from cornwall is that uh, cornwall uh, and uh, also, the, the other site in, in Britain uh, refused uh, to accept uh, the, this uh, commercial development. Uh, the, they considered that uh, obviously there is no true market and there is, uh, it is not uh, correct to, to uh, maintain. Here, in, in these uh, two large developments, uh, we, we are talking about uh, tens of thousands of animals uh, be, being kept in captivity, uh, as we know, uh, in order to, to breed. And, and, and create uh, baby rabbits uh, to be used either for, for meat or, or for the fur on their bodies. Uh, th these kind of developments obviously uh, bring all the associated risks for our environment of intensive farming, uh, which means uh, large, uh, large quantities of, of uh, medical products, antibiotics used, uh, danger of disease, for example, from the, the conditions in which the animals are kept, and uh, uh, not to mention last but not least uh, the, 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 the unhappiness, the cruelty uh, to which the, these uh, small creatures are exposed in, in continuity uh, simply for uh, a system which uh, creates uh, money for a small group of individuals. 
now in line with, with what more and more people around the world are beginning to believe and in line with, with the, the vision, uh, the spirit, the philosophy of our founder Giancarlo Barbadoro and uh, everyone here on Radio Dreamland, uh, it's time uh, for change. Uh, the county of Cornwall, uh, the local authorities, the local people of Cornwall uh, decided that uh, this kind of development uh, to, to uh, uh, and a torture camp for, for, for rabbits uh, the, it is not acceptable, it is not uh, desirable for anybody or anything. And I hope uh, at the time, uh, since the world leaders are on, uh, on site, uh, maybe they understand the message too. And uh, the, the, the local authorities, uh, the people of Cornwall, refused to accept uh, this development of, of the, the rabbit farms. Uh, one or two interesting aspects uh, associated uh, with, with this particular story of the, the, the animal, the, the, the rabbit farming. Uh, one of these is that uh, the, the, effectively the decision, uh, the, the result, the, the, the failure to construct the, these uh, things was, was a democratic decision. It was uh, caused essentially by a large number of people signing a petition, uh, like eight, almost 100,000 people signing a petition against uh, the, these operations. And, and uh, the, the local authorities uh, refusing to, to accept them uh, on economic ecological grounds, uh, but, but not simply on uh, animal grounds, but uh, on, on ecological grounds. Uh, why, why do you want to do such a thing here in, in this area? You're, you're going to cause destruction and, and damage to the environment, for, for example. Uh, the, the other one of the aspects to do with the petition is uh, also the fact that uh, a famous uh, English comic, who I, I have previously mentioned on this program for the, for the same reason, who is an animal rights campaigner, he's extremely famous. I mean, he's presented uh, presented the the Oscars uh, over for several years in America. But he, he's an English comedian uh, named Ricky Gervais. Uh, he actively supported the petition. And, and helped uh, to support uh, pub publicizing the, the situation which was going on uh, and therefore was extremely influential in, in, uh, in the success in, in blocking this, uh, the, the, these projects. Uh, one other aspect uh, which I noticed uh, reading uh, about the situation through the, the social networks and, and uh, also through through the media in effect but uh, listening to the, the comments of, of the person the, the only one person who basically wanted to uh, construct these rabbit farms uh, obviously was, was uh, this person was dissatisfied with uh, being uh, not having permission to construct his farms uh, what, what were his comments. Uh, basically, they, they were an example of the, the poverty of argument of, of people uh, proposing uh, the eating of meat and uh, construction of intensive farming. Uh, this man uh, made no answer whatsoever to, uh, to general and, and very valid complaints uh, about uh, the damage done by intensive farming. Uh, he simply said, look, uh, people want to eat eat rabbit meat. Uh, people have eaten rabbit meat since medieval times. My intention is to let people eat rabbit meat. Uh, but uh, the most the most amazing part of his objections uh, came in the phrase where, where he said, uh, look, these rabbits are not the same as your pet rabbits. Uh, th these are rabbits which have always been bred uh, to be eaten. Here I am saying bread uh, in the sense of alevare, not uh, bread uh, pane. Uh, they have been bred to be eaten. They are bred uh, as uh, objects uh, for the market. Uh, my only hope, uh, which I, I'm sure will be shared by many others, is that this uh, particular gentleman and his own personal ideas are in, destined to extinction in the near future. I believe uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, if these ideas do not change quickly, then we are all uh, destined for extinction, which would be a shame. 
Now, I, I don't want to uh, finish this lesson on, on this disastrous note, uh, because uh, at the beginning I, I said I wanted to talk about being happy. Uh, so let, let's go back there uh, and go back to Cornwall. Uh, because uh, while the world leaders are enjoying their holiday in, in Cornwall, uh, I have to report uh, that I, I have a family uh, who still live in the area of Cornwall, uh, nephews of mine, uh, we, who I, I continue to follow through the social networks on, on Facebook, for example. I know that Facebook is a dangerous medium uh, containing lies and misinformation, uh, but uh, what I see from my family are not lies or misinformation. My nephews and uh, their wives and children, uh, their families, uh, continue to post uh, photographs of themselves uh, being happy. Uh, well, what's interesting about their being happy is that uh, there are always photographs taken in the nature, in, in, uh, in the, the beautiful landscape and uh, the beautiful places that there are in, in Cornwall and Devon, uh, which is all the area where I come from. The photographs always have one uh, common theme. Uh, they're, they're not uh, photographed uh, driving around in, in fast expensive cars or visiting shopping centres and buying fashionable clothes, designer clothes, or bopping around in discotheques and, and, and getting incredibly drunk in the streets at night. Uh, they're simply photographs of people enjoying themselves and, and being happy. Uh, they're, they're always on the beach or in a forest or or in the hills somewhere, uh, the sun is shining, uh, they, they, they have a, a dog and they have their family and, and they are simply walking or maybe riding bicycles or, or doing something quite simple that, that you, you can do in nature with, with, with no problem. And uh, it creates a, a feeling of well-being and happiness in them. So I really hope that our great uh, powerful world leaders who are sitting in Cornwall are able to, to appreciate uh, the air, uh, the, the atmosphere, <laughs> the, the, the simple form of existence uh, which permeates uh, Cornwall and the kingdom, the ancient kingdom of Cornwall, land of legends. And I hope they, they can make uh, decisions and understand uh, that, that, that this is, is, is what uh, this is what we need. Uh, this is what we have to protect. Uh, this is what we have to experience. Uh, a little uh, spirituality, uh, a little happiness, and a little uh, feeling for for the planet, uh, rather than trying to simply destroy it for money. I sincerely hope our world leaders are listening to the Celtic message from Cornell, uh, which is uh, the message uh, part of the vision, uh, an important part of the vision of Radio Dreamland. Uh, on that note, uh, it's uh, time to finish our lesson this evening. Uh, we'll be back again uh, next Monday, so keep tuning in to Radio Dreamland webcast. Uh, this is your, your speaker and teacher, Nick Yolden, wishing you a very, very enjoyable evening. And remember to share the vision. Good night, everybody.